The 2021 MLS season is going to kick off any day now, so it's time for the yearly Kicking It With Drew season preview. Today, we're going to preview the 2021 season, predict where we think, where I think each team is going to end up at the end of the season, and I'm also going to predict for you guys the MLS Cup winner and, of course, the Supporter Shields winner. And then at the end of the season, we'll come back to this video. I'll do a little reaction video to this video to see how right or wrong I was at the end of the season in terms of the winners and where each team finished off. Uh, for the season. Uh, of course, this season is still going to be, you know, affected by the whole COVID-19 pandemic. But the important thing is that MLS is coming back and we're actually going to play some games. I actually get to watch MLS kick off once again. I think this is going to be yet another big season for MLS. We've got a lot of young talent to, to showcase. We've got a lot of young or just a lot of quality players, star players here in MLS. that I'm excited to see play once again. And we'll get to that all later in the video. But first, before we do that, be sure you guys follow me here on the Twitter and also be sure you guys follow me here on the Instagram. I'm trying to get all you guys from here to go hang out with me over there as well because that is where I can interact with you guys the most, especially on Twitter. That's like where I really I, I tweet more than I post Instagram. But so if you have a couple seconds, I'll give you five seconds to follow me on Twitter at least. Excellent. All right. So without further ado, let's just get to the video. All right, so welcome to the 2021 MLS season preview with your boy, Drew. The way I set this video up is I have both conferences here in one video, but I did split up each table, like each conference in half. I have the bottom half first, and then we'll talk about the top half for each conference. The way I did that, or the reason I did that was, one, the whole table didn't fucking fit in the video, right? And two, it's just I want to spend more time talking about the top half because the top half deserves its own, like, more dedication there or more attention there because it's the playoff section and of course the table leaders to see where which team finishes up top and which teams makes the playoffs and yada 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 so if your team's on the bottom half and i spend and I, don't, and I don't spend too much time on them i apologize but um they just gotta pick up the slack you know what i mean <laughs> all right so i also listed two players for each team i listed like a key player that is gonna be a big important player for them uh, going through the season. And of course, a player I think we should all keep an eye on, whether it be a young USMNT talent player, a young talent in general, or just a player that I think needs to have good form to you know, rejuvenate their career or just needs to be in better form this season. So without further ado, let's get started to the Eastern Conference where your boy Drew's team is, um, but the bottom half this time. Here it is. The bottom eight of the Eastern Conference, I have Montreal finishing dead last. Um, they finished ninth last season, but I, I, don't know, I don't know. I just feel like Montreal, I don't see enough for them to, for me to think otherwise, that they can get out of like last place or 13th place. Like I pick last place because I just feel like they're going to have a worse, a bad season this year. I don't know. Maybe it's because they lost Bojan. I know Bojan wasn't like the best. He had some good good performances here and there last year, but they lost that kind of talent in the midfield there and the attacking line as well. Uh, and also, of course, the big guy himself, Thierry Henry, is gone now, you know, with some family issues that you can't really blame him for. I would be homesick too for my kids and, and you know, my family. But let's see, you know, after lo losing that that big of a d guy, Thierry Henry, who I think had a control of his team pretty good last year, make them finish higher in, in ninth place. But I don't know. I don't see enough for Montreal to think that they're going to finish anywhere lower or anywhere higher than 13 or 14. Speaking of 13, they have Chicago Fire here. Just, you know, whatever. Like, typical run the mill here uh, team. I don't see much for them to make me think that they're going to finish anywhere outside of the top eight. I just feel like the teams ahead of them are better than them this season, uh, especially Cincinnati. I, the Cincinnati, uh, obviously, dead last last year. They were, like, terrible. They only scored 12 goals in general. But I think with the addition of Luciano Costa, they could finish a little higher, maybe not too much higher, but a little definitely not dead last this year. Uh, Luciano Costa is going to be a big player for them. They're, they're number one player there, as long as well as Frankie Amaya, another young USMNT talent there. Um, he, he is being like reported to be scouted by other MLS teams, but this could be his last season with Cincinnati, so hopefully he makes it a big one and kind of um, you know piles on that breakout year he had last year. Um, but DC United is going to be a team I think are not going to finish that low again as they did last year in 13th. I'm hoping that Edison Flores comes into himself more. You know, he had an injury and all those issues last year. Um, not the best debut there for DC, DC United or MLS, but my fellow Paduano, Edison Flores, I expect more from him and I expect to see him have a good season, hopefully in form, hopefully all healthy, as well as, you know, Paul Ariel, I expect him to always be in the mix for DC United after he comes back from his uh, recent injury there. And also that, you know, the whole Twitter thing that was going on. That was like crazy drama there, but whatever. A failed Swansea City um, loan spell as well for Paul Ariello. So let's see how he bounces back, coming back to his, his home team of DC United. Now, the big one here, Inter Miami. Again, finishing 10th place like they did last year. 
And for David Beckham, I don't know why. I just don't see his team finishing anywhere outside of the bottom eight here. Um, they could finish 10th. They could finish 8th. But I feel like that's the max that they could go. Because there's a lot of tough teams here in the Eastern Conference. And I just, I don't know. I don't see enough in this team to make me think that they are able to get out of this bottom eight. You know, they got Gonzalo Higuain and Rodolfo Pizarro. But Higuain is a guy I, I don't rate too highly. I know he's a skillful player. He, you know, scored lots of goals and stuff. But um, now at Inter Miami, I don't know. Like, I, I don't, I feel like he's like not a big, a big team player. Like, well, not team player. I feel like he's not a big game player. Like, he always chokes in big games. And I'll never forgive him for that 2014 World Cup final miss that made him not have Messi win the World Cup. Um, but Rodolfo Pizarro, again, also a player here who I expected more of. And I, I'm sure a lot of people did for Miami. But I feel like he's just a regular, just a decent, good player. Nothing outstanding like Pozuelo or um, Giovinco. He didn't have the impact here. He just had like a little, he kind of just phased out. You know, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know why. But nonetheless, both of those guys are going to be key players for Inter Miami going forward this season. Above them, I have both New York teams. Now, both New York teams are here in the bottom eight. Is it because maybe I'm a Union fan? Probably. But also because there's a lot of better, much better Eastern Conference teams ahead of these New York teams that I just don't think they'll be able to push out of the top seven. Maybe the number seven place of Nashville. I don't know. It's a little spoiler alert right there. But of course, for the Red Bulls, we've got Aaron Long as their key player at the back to keep the defense in line. And of course, Caden Clark, probably the most anticipated and sorry, probably the most highly rated youngster for the USMNT in MLS right now. Definitely going to have a lot of eyes on him this season, as well as Chris Gloucester after his his failure there at PSV. Let's see how he does here back in the States. And that's that for the bottom eight. Let's go up now to the top seven of the Eastern Conference. This is where it gets good. This is where we get all the playoff teams and, of course, the eventual uh, league leaders here. And speaking of league leaders, let's just talk about it right now. I'm sure you guys are all going up to the top of the table. And you see here Columbus Crew. Literally talk me out of Columbus Crew not finishing first place. I don't know. Like maybe Tor uh, Toronto and Orlando could push them for first place, but I just don't see anybody dethroning the MLS Cup champions right now. Uh, Lucas Zellerian, always a big player, key player for Columbus Crew. And also I picked here Yazi Zardes. Why, Drew? Why the hell you put Yazi Zardes down here? Well, because the Gold Cup is coming up, and the Gold Cup for USMT is going to be mostly a B team or mostly MLS-filled roster. And if Yazi Zardes wants to be in that roster, he's got to be performing well this season. So I'm going to be keeping tabs on him and see how he does, um, as well as Josie Outdoor for Toronto FC finishing second place. The same reason I put Yazi Zardes here is the same reason I'm putting Josie right here at a player to keep an eye on. Obviously, their biggest player right now is for Toronto FC, but also like the whole... The whole uh, criticism he's, he's been receiving recently and in re most recent months, I want to see him back up his talk and come in here and perform well and score more than one goal this season. Orlando City, tactical manager, will be happy that I have them up here at third place. You know, of course, they had that crazy penalty shootout in uh, the playoffs last year, so that's something to think about. Um, Nani's going to be a key player for them as well, and also is Alexandro Pato be the player that I think we all need to keep an eye on this season? Um, I, you know, Pato was a guy who really was like a wonder kid back in the day. I think he scored maybe one of the fastest goals ever against Barcelona when he was with Milan. He scored within like five seconds of the game. It was crazy. That's my biggest memory of, of Alexander Pato. But this season, I want to see him, you know, he's been plagued with injuries his whole career and, you know, just bad performances and stuff. But I think maybe this could be the year where he can rejuvenate his career, reignite him, himself as a player and hopefully have, have a good career here with Orlando. Um, I, 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 I do hope that for him this season. And my boys in fourth place are the Union. Um, they did finish last last year in first place, winning the Supporters' Shield, but they, I feel like they just lost too many big names, that too many players that were so crucial to their good season last year. They lost Ray Gaddis, of course, a you know, nice veteran there. They lost, of course, Mark McKenzie at the back, best defender they had last year, at least one of them. And, of course, the big man himself, Brendan Aronson, one of the best attacking players they had last season, who was an MVP, I think, well, like, it was just, it's a bad loss. Um, and I feel like they don't really have anybody anybody to replace that quality of those players they lost yet. Um, Andre Blake, obviously, the best goalkeeper in MLS. He, he's going to be their key player there as well. Sorry, Matt Turner, you got none on Andre Blake. Tell you right now. I also have here Anthony Fontana because I feel like he's going to be the guy trying to fill the void that Brendan Aronson left here in Philadelphia Union. Of course, there's also Paxton Aronson, who was Brendan's brother, who people are rating highly as well. So we'll see how he does in here and there this season. I hope to see him get, get some chances as well. But Anthony Fontana is going to be the main guy to fill Brendan Aronson's role. Hopefully he can do it well. I don't expect him to like overtake Aronson, but I do expect him to try hard and put in some good performances. 
Fifth place here, I have New England Revolution by Mr. Bruce Arena. I think they had a pretty good playoff season, uh, playoff run last season. Gustavo Bo was crucial to that playoff run last year. Um, so I expect him to have uh, a good season this year and, and be their key player. And also Tejan Buchanan made some good performances that last year as well. And also this year at the Olympics with Canada. So this guy looks like he's going to become the real deal. I want to see him, you know, build more on himself this year and just have a better and a bigger breakout year uh, this coming season. Now the big name I have here, of course, is Atlanta United, who finished pretty low last year uh, for their standards at least. But I feel like they could bounce back this year with, of course, obviously the return of their, their GOAT, Joseph Martinez, coming back into the fold, coming back from the ACL injury. Um, I, I, who knows what kind of player he's going to be, but I think he, he's going to come back stronger than ever. He's going to come back motivated. He, you know, he wants to score goals again. He wants to be in the conversation of you know the best uh, goal scorer in MLS history. And he went very well could be if he comes back and keeps scoring goals like he used to do. Of course, George Bellow is be another player, young player for USMNT to keep an eye on. We need him to develop well this year. We need that left back uh, death for the senior team. And I feel like he could be the guy that uh, a lot of people are going to be watching and hopefully filling that backup role at least to Anthony Robinson. Um, so that's that. And of course, Nashville is just Nashville. Um, they had they didn't make the playoffs last year after beating uh, was Inter Miami in the play-in, but then they lost to. Somebody, I forget. It doesn't matter. They lost. <laughs> um, but uh, re regular season, I do expect them to make the playoffs again, like just barely. Uh, of course, Walker Zimmerman, go, uh, the best defender last season. I don't know why, but that's that's him. <laughs> All right, let's go to the Western Conference now, bottom eight of this conference here. I've got uh, just terrible, and uh, bottom of the table here is Vancouver Whitecaps. Like, I just don't see any bright light from Vancouver. They finished ninth last year, yeah, but. I don't know. I feel like I just don't see much for them to finish anywhere higher than 13, 12, or 11. But I picked them as dead last because I do think Dynamo and Real Salt Lake will finish ahead of them. Those two teams, though, nothing special for them. Nothing special for me either. They don't do nothing for me. Houston Dynamo with that rebrand, I don't know. I, I don't mess with that. But they'll be down here in the bottom somewhere. These three will be kind of flopping places maybe uh, this season. But Austin FC, I do expect them not to finish last. I think it has some pretty good veterans here, some good MLS players. They got Matt Beasler, they got Nick Lima, who you know been around the block here in MLS a long time. They got Thomas Pochettino and Cecilio Dominguez, two players I really want to. I'm really interested in keeping an eye on this season. Thomas Pochettino just scored like a banger of a free kick in preseason for Austin FC. So I want this kid's like looking like to be like the real deal, like the hyped up player uh, this year. So let's see what he can do for Austin FC, and hopefully he can carry them outside of the bottom eight. But for right now. I have them at 10. That could change later on, but uh, I probably can't change it later on anyway. <laughs> um, number nine and eight, I have Colorado Rapids and San Jose. These two guys can, these two teams can switch places probably, um, but I don't expect them to try to break into the uh, Western Conference playoffs yet because I don't know. I feel like the teams ahead of them right now have gotten better or are just too good for them to compete with again. I know Colorado Rapids did finish fifth last year, but I, I expect them to, to a, a little drop this season. Um, of course, Kellen Acosta, again, it's going to be a player that I think, and also Jackson Ewell are going to be players to watch uh, because of the Gold Cup roster. They're going to be wanting to perform well this season, so that way they get to go to the Gold Cup uh, this summer. Cole Bass, another young USMNT prospect there that I did break onto the scene last year, and I do expect him to uh, have a better season, even better breakout year this year for Colorado, and I really do hope to keep an eye on him as well. Now, on to the top part of the Western Conference. This is the fun part now. This is where the big heavy hitters are of the league. And here we go. <clears throat> Let's just go to the top once again. I know you guys are looking up top. And yes, it's LAFC that I picked to finish league leaders here in the Western Conference. Um, Carlos Vela and Diego Rossi, give me a better duo. Like, you honestly can't uh, for MLS. Like, these two guys are the, the guys right now for LAFC. They're going to be the guys scoring goals. Diego, Ro Diego Rossi has shown that he could score goals and, and you know, perform well in the absence of Carlos Vela. Um, but when they're together on the field, it's just it's madness. Obviously, they made it to the last, uh, to the final of the CONCACAF Champions League, where they did lose, unfortunately, 2-1. Um, but nonetheless, I do expect them to bounce back and have a really great season and finish top of the table here in the Western Conference. Seattle Sounders, Portland Timbers, second and third place, just like last year. Seattle Sounders, though, worries me because they did lose one of their big counterattack players, one of their big main attackers in Jordan Morris. Obviously, su suffering a bad ACL injury while, while on loan at Swansea, it, it, it sucks. You know, it sucks for Jordan Morris's career and also sucks for Seattle Sounders because they don't know what when he's going to come back. And if he does come back, what kind of player he will be. He already had a big injury before. And this is just his second big injury now again. See, I hope he comes back stronger than ever. But 
For right now, they're going to have to do without him for most of the season, probably all the season. We don't know yet. But Raul Rio Diaz, my fellow Peruano, again, I expect him to score goals nonetless. doesn't matter who's next to him. He will score goals. He will find a way to score in goals, uh, especially with Nicolas Oledo uh, pulling the strings over there. Portland Timbers, uh, they got Jeremy it will be say that I, I, a lot of people really don't rate recently, I've seen, but I want him to come back here and give him the same performance that he had in the MLS back tournament. I want him to be on fire again. I want him to score goals. He's going to be another guy to keep an eye on for that Gold Cup roster. Let's see if he can perform well and see if, if he can put his name in a hat for Greg Berhalter for that Gold Cup roster. Sporting Kansas City will not finish first place again for me. I don't know why. I just I, I just picked Seattle Sounders, LAFC, and Portland to just do better than KC this year. But we'll see. They got Alan Polito, so they anything can happen. This guy also is a talent, a good talent here for Sporting Kansas City. And also they got Gianluca Buzio, who I feel like has been around Kansas City and MLS for like a long time now. But he's still just like a teenager. Like he's like 19 or something. He's still a young kid. Um it's crazy to see that. Uh, this could be his if he has a good performance, a good breakout year where he's like really making a big name for himself this year. This could be his last year in MLS. And I I I rate him to move on to another league abroad after the season. Now, fifth place I have here, Minnesota United. They got they do got Patrick Weah, who is a cousin of Tim Weah. Um that, that's gonna be ex- excited to see if he could make a name, his uh, his own name for himself this year. The big name I have here is LA Galaxy finishing above um, where they finished last year. Last year, they were 10th place. This year, I do expect them to make the playoffs at least. I feel like they're just, they are they will just barely make the playoffs. Um, I feel like they could probably swap places with FC Dallas now, thinking about it. But Chicharito needs to have a good season. He needs to bounce back after that terrible flop season he had in his debut for MLS last year. If he does well, if he, if he bounces back correctly uh, and is, is, is in good form, I do expect him to uh, help them carry on to a playoff spot. Efrain Alvarez is going to be also a player that to keep to keep eyes on. He's not a full like you uh, Mexican national team representative yet or player yet. He could still choose to represent the U.S.M.N.T.s. We don't know yet, but um, it's looking like he's leaning more towards Mexico. But for me, I don't see much uh, potential in him uh, over like Aronson or somebody like that or Gio Reyna. But he could prove me wrong this season. I'm gonna, definitely going to keep an eye on him and see how he performs for LA Galaxy this year, of, along obviously with a friend of the channel, Sebastian Legit. And of course, to wrap it up here, last place in the playoff spot is FC Dallas finishing seventh place. Um, their big player that I'm going to really uh, be interested to see how they perform is Pax and Pomico. Pomico had a really good 2019 breakout year. 2020 really suffered with some injuries that kind of put him out for a while. But now I feel like he's hungrier than ever. He's back. He's returning from injury. He's looking like he could have another breakout year this season for FC Dallas, and I really hope he does because I really did rate this guy back in the day, especially in like that U20 World Cup a couple years ago. He was like the main man there, the captain. I do expect him to have a better season this year if he can stay healthy, as long as as, as well as Tanner Testament, another player, young USMNT prospect again. Let's see how he does. We do need more depth in that CDM midfield position. So that's that for the conference predictions. Now let's get on to the Supporters' Shield winner. Who do I think it's going to be? It's obviously going to be either LAFC or Columbus Crew because those are the two teams I picked to finish top of their conferences. But I want to keep it in the Eastern Conference, baby. Let's go to Columbus Crew. I feel like you can't talk me out of picking them. This could be a safe pick, probably, but I feel like they're just so stacked. They hardly lost any players that were important to their to their campaign last year. So I don't see why not. Like, why can't they win the Supporters Shield this year? So my money is on Columbus Crew from wrong. Uh, we'll come back to that at the end of the year, <laughs> at the end of the season. Now for the MLS Cup champions, who could it be? Again, it probably it could be LAFC, it could be Columbus Crew, but we all know in the playoffs anything could happen. It doesn't matter if you're the Spurs Shield winner. We saw that with Philly last year that they they did get knocked out early on in the playoff bracket. So I still have to go with LAFC. Is this, is this a safe pick? It's really not a safe pick if you think about it. They've been. Under always underwhelmed in underwhelming in a, like a playoff bracket style here in MLS. Um, they've never won the MLS Cup. They are they're still looking for their first big trophy here in MLS. Um, and I feel like this has to be their year. They've always been like knocked up by Seattle or, or another team. They've always just underperformed. And I just don't understand that. I don't I don't see how if they do not win the MLS Cup this year. How how can there not be any questions about the team, about like the coaches, the managers, or the board? Like there has to be a reason why this team is not winning the MLS Cup 
championship. Like they they are one of the best teams in MLS. We always say that, but they need to win this MLS Cup. I feel like this year could be their year. Like I said earlier, they did make it to the final of the CONCACAF Champions League. They beat all those League MX teams to get to the final and just barely lose. So if they could beat all those League MX teams, they could beat all these MLS teams um, and make it to the final of the MLS Cup Championship and probably, hopefully for them, win it. All they got to do is really just avoid Seattle Sounders in the playoffs somewhere. <laughs> um, and I think they'll be golden. But that's it. Um, let me know how you guys feel about my predictions here in this video. And also let me know where you think your team will finish in their conference this season down below in the comment section. Again, thank you so much for watching the channel. Thank you so much for sticking around with me so long after all these years. I appreciate you guys. As always, if you're not subscribed, be sure you subscribe and hit the like button as well. Helps your boy Drew's out. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.